Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Thanks for joining me. Spend a little time with me today. I'm so happy that you showed up and you pressed play. It's going to be worth it. You'll be happy by the end of the program. Hope you stay through to the end because the end is where the meat is. That's where all the good stuff, all the beginning stuff that we talk about is, is just kind of like laying the groundwork. And it's scary today. It's very scary today. There's a lot of scary things going on. You know, people are talking about biblical plagues, locusts, bats, coronas, climate, massive die-offs. Like last year, what it was like a third of the pork population died, like all the pigs died, swine flu. Lots of, um, lots of things to get you very concerned. It's, um... It's gotten me a little concerned, so I gotta tell you, I've been, uh, I've been seeking, and I got some good news for you today. I got some good news, and we're gonna speak out in faith about some things too, because there's been a discovery. No one's talking about this discovery, but it's a big one. So I hope you're buckled up, people, because this is the show you've been waiting for. Welcome back to the program. In Luke chapter 21, that is in the Bible. In Luke 21, it talks about these signs, these things that we should pay attention to, that there's going to be signs in the heavens, that there's signs in the sun and the moons, and that there will be distress in the nations and perplexity. And get this, men's hearts will fail themselves for fear. What does it mean to have a heart fail? Well, what does, a, what does it mean to have a heart fail? Well, feel, fear brings out the worst in you. The heart is very symbolic of, of um, having hope and faith and love and compassion and joy. But when fear comes in, you, uh, you forget all that. Your heart fails. You get what I'm saying? There's going to be distress in the earth and the nations perplexity, right? Doesn't it seem like everybody's perplexed right now? So much weird stuff going on in politics, around the world. You don't really know what to make of anything. But here's the thing. As verse 6 in Luke 21 says, as men's hearts are failing themselves for fear, and as they're looking for those things which are going to come upon the earth, everybody's waiting for the next big thing. Guess what? That's when they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of glory. Coming in a cloud, the Son of Man comes with great glory and great power. And a lot of people think that means out there, up in the sky, you're going to see, you know, Jesus riding a bunch of clouds coming down. Yahshua's, you know... Like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? When he's coming with his big angels and his armies. And he's what a lot of people are teaching today. But they don't understand what a cloud is. The scriptures say what a cloud is. You know, if you're going to use the scriptures, you should use the rest of the scriptures to back it up. And I'm going to explain. Because it's actually a pretty cool thing. So when all of this nonsense is happening. When all of this craziness is happening, when everybody's freaking out over this, that, and the other thing, and it seems like all hope is lost, that's when you see the Son of Man coming on these clouds. And when that comes, listen to what it says. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Don't get scared because your redemption draws near. 
What are you being redeemed from? Being redeemed from your fear, from your trials, from your torment, from your pain, from all the wickedness that's in your life. You're going to be redeemed from that. And it's going to take a lot of stuff in the world to get you to finally say, well, hey, you know, at least I know that I have an infinite resting place and that this is all part of the plan and that this is all leading to something great because it is. Now, what are these clouds? What are these clouds? that uh, the Son of Man comes riding. Well, guess what Hebrews says? Hebrews says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So here we see scripture comparing a cloud to the, a people like, you know, maybe look you, like me. People that are just sharing the truth of God, that there is a great cloud of witnesses. And what does a cloud do, right? What does a cloud do? It rains. It's like the intermediary between heaven and earth. The cloud sits right up there in the, and it takes from heaven and it rains down on the earth so the earth can then grow up and it becomes a cycle. But scripture doesn't stop there. When Israel was in the wilderness, when they were like traveling around for like 40 something years, they were led through this wilderness, through this desert, with a cloud, a pillar of cloud by the day. They were led through the wilderness by a cloud, and at night they were led by a pillar of fire. Now this is symbolic because in the day you can see things, right? So the day is symbolic of understanding the truth. And a cloud would be, so if you're in, 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 a, in a state of enlightenment, if you're in a stage of uh, understanding, if you're seeking and you're ready for the truth of God, well guess what? You're going to be led through your hard times by the cloud, by the witness of God, by those that are sharing the truth of God and by the witness that is in you leading you through this wilderness that we're in because we are all in a wilderness but it's leading somewhere and at night symbolic of darkness ignorance when you don't know any better right when you can't see right in front of your face when you don't know what's coming fire leads you god has this worked out so that we can't fail that's what the gospel means it's good news but the examples of clouds don't stop there many times you hear the the, the teachers of the day being called clouds without water in uh, Jude chapter 1 says there are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water carried about by the winds. Trees whose fruit has withered is twice dead plucked up by the roots. These the leaders of the church are without water. Water by the way in scripture is where we get baptism from, the immersion into the truth of God. You're washed by the water of the word of God, the truth. The truth is rained down from the clouds and we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And in the day when men's heart fail themselves for fear, you should look up to the clouds because your deliverance and redemption is drawing near. So all this stuff that you're hearing in the land, it's all working together for our good. As scary as that sounds. Why am I not freaked out? I'll be honest, I get a little, I was at the gym, I get worried, there are a lot of people there. I went to the mall, a lot of people there. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm not perfect. So I still operate sometimes in fear. My heart sometimes fails myself for fear, but I understand when that happens, it's time to look up. So I'm gonna be redeemed from it. You're gonna be redeemed from it. We're gonna start hearing about this. Now I've been saying for a long time, if you've been following the channel, that it's gonna get like, things are gonna get bad, but it's gonna get better for those that are seeking the truth. It's gonna get better for those that are seeking God, that are, that are living for more, that are being compassionate and kind, that have a purpose in life, that are not being selfish and self-absorbed, that are living for more. It's gonna get better, but the world is gonna get more claustrophobic. You look at what's happening all over the place with this, the videos that are popping up from different parts of the world with this fear of what this, you know, virus might bring. It's getting a little claustrophobic, don't you think?
Men's hearts are failing themselves for fear. But yet, what does that mean? That means that your redemption draws near. That means that you'll soon see the Son of Man arriving on the clouds of glory and power and strength. This is going to be a beautiful thing, and, and I believe it's already happening in pockets around the world. And this is why I needed to uh, share this video today, because of a discovery that just happened. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I want to tell you about this first discovery. They discovered a 7,000-year-old wooden well. 7,000 year old. Now, we don't know if it's really 7,000 years old. We don't know. But I do know that it's an ancient well and that it was discovered, that it was submerged and now it's discovered. And that's a pretty good thing because that means that an ancient well of truth is waiting. But here's the thing, you can't let it dry up because, you know, they have to keep it wet because if, they, if, if it dries up, what's going to happen is it's going to crumble. So they're going to find a way to preserve it. And what is the water again? The water is truth, right? I say this a lot because, you know, there's a story about Jacob's well where Jesus was sitting with the Sumerian woman and he asked her to, to get him something to drink and the woman's like, the well is deep, get it yourself, pal, right? Yasha was like, if you knew who it was that you were talking to, you would, uh, you'd ask me for the living water, right? Because we are a wellspring, the truth of God, the kingdom of heaven, that everybody's looking outside and waiting for is within you. It's in your midst. You can't say, look here or look there. The scriptures say, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The clouds are those witnesses that are in the earth. And soon you're going to see the power of God working through them. How do I know this? Because a seed was also discovered. Around Jesus' time. Now, I, I think that this is fantastic. Now, here's the crazy part. This seed from 2,000 years ago, right around the time of Jesus, was discovered. Scientists in Israel, they're going to grow date plants from this thing. They've already done it before. Seeds found in the Judean desert are male and female, leading to the hopes of producing dates. I don't know if you know anything about a date, but it's a very symbolic fruit. Seed is an important thing. Jesus compared the kingdom of God to a seed, right? A mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, but once it grows, it becomes one of the largest and most wonderful trees that houses the birds of the air, gives them a place to stay, offers shelter and all sorts of stuff. A seed, the tiniest of seeds. Your faith is as a seed, if it is as a mustard seed, right? As a mustard seed, a mustard seed grows into a mustard tree. The seed of Christ grows into Christ, which is the hope of glory in you. And this seed has been discovered from a date plant. A handful of date seeds from fruit that ripened around the time of Jesus have been successfully planted and grown. The seed has been successfully planted and grown. So while you see all of this nonsense in the world, at the same very time, we see a seed that is now growing in the world today from Jesus' time. Nothing new under the sun. That gives me hope. That gives me um, a sense of peace. Because I know that God is working all things together for the good of those that love God. First, the Neolithic craftsmanship of that well. First, that well is discovered, that deep well, drawing from the depths. Now the seed from Jesus' time discovered. When the world is out of control and everyone is talking about this, that, and the other thing, and everybody's saying that the end, the end, the end, the end, I declare the beginning. I declare the beginning. Now I know that this virus is a scary thing, and on the channel I've been doing something that is a little bit unorthodox, I guess. A lot of people aren't used to this. And I was talking to my buddy Ernie about this just uh, just yesterday, because I always uh, I always pray about what what I should share right now. While everybody else is talking about death, the scriptures tell us to speak life 
to speak life. Now this virus has a lot of people nervous. It's a lot of people scared. And um, there's a lot of disinformation out there and there's a lot of great information out there. But I wanna put something else out there. I wanna put something else out there that nobody with faith is putting out there. And I'm hoping that God is gonna answer this prayer. Just as we prayed for this and we prayed for that, just as we've done this in the past when we were faced with a time when it seemed you know, like all hope was lost and that we were gonna to go to war or it was gonna get really bad somewhere else or just as all of these things I'm praying Maybe, maybe the Lord, maybe the Lord can work. Maybe we'll hear very soon about, um, you know, a vaccine. Or maybe he, we'll hear very soon about some kind of treatment that's helping with this virus. I'll put that out there, Lord, because that's what I want. I want to see your power, your glory, so that when people come on here and they watch this show, Lord, that in a week, two weeks time, three weeks tops, we hear about something that's gonna put everyone's failing hearts back where they need to be, in strength, in peace, in joy, so that they can seek you, that they can serve you. And when this happens, Lord, that they come to you and say, thank you, teach me the truth no matter what the cost. I wanna know more. I hope that each and every one of you do that. Now, obviously, I don't have any inside information. I'm not like a lot of the people that say they know, they know, they know, but I was inspired to put that out there. Because I know that God can do all things. And I see, I see this being just another one of those things to get you to be scared. And God doesn't give us the spirit of fear. So if God doesn't give us the spirit of fear and you are operating in fear, then guess what? You've been tricked by the devil. That's right. That liar that's in our head all the time, whether you want to just call it a bunch of lies and negativity, you want to call it an extra dimensional being, you want to call it alien, whatever. Those negative thoughts in your head, those things that are getting you scared, all that programming that you're being hit with, it's from the father of all lies. There's no truth in it, so don't listen to it. The power of life and death is in our tongue. It's time for us to speak life. And these words, my friends, they are as seed. The sower goes out into the field and he sows seed. You are the field. I am sowing the seed. Some of it's going to fall in good ground. Some of it's going to fall on stony ground. Some of it's going to fall on thorny ground. All of these things that we read about in Scripture, they're right here, right now. Let's speak life. Let's stop worrying. And let's see this miracle happen once again. I love each and every one of you. I hope you do share, subscribe, tell your friends. You know, buy a, uh, you know, uh, Uranus is a planet mug. If you want, or get a buckle up shirt, you can get it in the link below. If you want to, uh, thank you for all my patrons. I know I don't push this a lot, but it's uh, incredibly helpful and I'm grateful to all of you. And if you want to um, support me on Patreon, there's a link below as well. I love you all and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.